we are in a single cell revolution. We went from looking at tumors with a black and white fuzzy television to seeing full color HD, and we're getting exponentially more data on exponentially more cells from exponentially more tumors, and the technology is just getting better and better. From a single drop of blood, we can probably generate more data from it than you can fit on a personal computer. As we're trying to peer deeper into the tumor microenvironment, for instance, to understand why sometimes therapies work and sometimes they don't, this is about data generation. We're sequencing hundreds of thousands to millions of different genes out of every patient at the same time. This data really has all the information about what's going on in any given human system at a particular time. And having a single cell analysis can really mesh well with understanding of which cells are needed to fight a disease. It was this intersection of data and technology that ultimately led us to discover why one patient's aggressive skin cancer kept coming back. Craig was an enthusiastic man about a lot of things. He was warm. He was a wonderful father to our children. We were all touched by Greg's case and by his spirit and generosity. When he was diagnosed in 2009, very little of this existed. And they had been working with his cells in the lab for years. So the day that he got his first T-cell infusion was such a happy day because that meant that there was something directly going into his body that was geared towards him. The combination of this drug and the T-cell made Greg's cancers shrink by over 80%. He went from approaching hospice to being back to work, and he did very well for 22 months. And so we were very excited because we knew we were on the right direction. But then to our dismay, the cancer came back. It's just his cancer just wouldn't give up. It just kept coming back. And then we got the data back from the tumor samples, and we learned that the cancer was hiding and that this is a reversible problem. When we looked at so-called, basically, HLA-B genes, that's that marker that the T cells are trying to recognize, and we saw that after the treatment, HLA-B was off, and we're like, boom, this is it. We know that's why that patient relapsed. The ability to see his tumor with big data let us understand for the first time why the skin cancer kept coming back. Unfortunately for him, because it's such a fast-acting and growing cancer, Greg died right before our 35th wedding anniversary. It was especially tough knowing that we were getting this information too late. However, we didn't want to stop because if there's any patient that doesn't have an optimal outcome, that, that's one patient too many. And, and we have got to understand that. When I trained as a fellow here at Fred Hutch, Dr. Thomas was my attending. And one of the first things that he told me, he says, you know, Effie, every patient teaches us something new. Every patient teaches us something new. Analyzing the data that we've generated help us to understand how we can potentially modify the treatment so that then we can make it even better and try to avoid that relapse that we saw in Greg's case. It was like you took this, this information, this technology, and you, you put it in the hands of these clinicians and researchers, and they truly are making some outstanding discoveries. We are getting closer and closer to an era of personalized medicine where we're going to be able to use these new technologies to look into tumors and to be able to see what's going on with that tumor and with that treatment and what's the right next step. How can we go from 50% response rate to 100% response rate? I mean, that's sort of what we want. Big data, I think of it sometimes as, as a microscope. And the more data we get, the, the clearer we can see things that are going on in biology. Every time we get a new data set, we're finding brand new things that we had no idea existed before. New types of T cells, new ways that cancers are learning to get around the immune system. I think it's changing everything, obviously, right? Because we couldn't even think we could do these types of experiments just 10 years ago. 
the scientific community has really accelerated its ability to integrate technology and data analysis and big data. Think about it. We're surrounded by these tech giants here in Seattle that have a vast experience in big data to solve all kinds of problems. Together, we can find cures faster. But we're not there yet. We need more research and more funds and more support. If we don't invest heavily in data science, we're not gonna cure cancer. We need cloud engineers. We need data scientists. We need a lot of really smart people to think about this problem. I can't think about 250 million sequences by myself. At the end of the day, this isn't just about science. It's about the personal toll of cancer. Every Thursday I go to clinic and I see my patients. Some of them I see great outcomes from the therapies we have now. Some of them we fail with the therapies we have now, and that's what gets me back to lab. Every Thursday night I'm in lab until 8, 9, 10 o'clock at night because I have to stay late, because I have to go back, because they're what keeps me coming back to lab, keeps me coming back every day, keeps me motivated and excited and eager to work on these really hard problems.